I am a very touchy person and I <laughs> like to touch people if I if I like them, you know, yeah. and the, the more I like someone, the more I touch somebody. Yeah. And it's almost like me giving them permission to engage further with me. Like you find somebody so much better when you like them. Like, like, and, and this is coming from somebody who has people that I don't even know sometimes, you know, not saying that I can't have good sex with right, strangers. Right. You, you know how to My go. My sex is better yeah. when I like you. Yeah. Like, if I like you, oh, I'm going to try harder. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. I, I, a lot of the guys that we, we talk to have problems with the social dynamics of of um, of just engaging with women. A lot of them don't have a lot of experience. And because they don't have experience, they, a lot of them... Uh, and, 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 and you being in the adult industry and kind of knowing yourself and being comfortable with yourself, I... I I, I believe, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, I believe if you're talking to some guy and he's nervous, you know how to make him feel like, like calm down. It's okay. Especially with the reputation you have and stuff that you know how to like, like, look, calm, it's fine. It's fine. But you, yeah. you know, that, that, that thing. Where I, I think my methods may be slightly unconventional, but yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I usually try for just like a real long hug first. Can we just right. hug it out? Yeah. Like, because I think a lot of times, I mean, I, I'm i a porn star and yeah. people think about sex when they see me. Mm. And uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's get some body stuff out the way, maybe yeah, yeah. like. Yeah, like if it's appropriate, yeah, I, I usually try to give like a nice big long hug until huh. the person stops shaking. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because um, yeah, I just I honestly feel like body contact is a lot of the problem in the first place. Yeah, you know? So yeah. let's just get that part over with. Yeah. That's an interesting and, strategy. Um, yeah, you have to do it. You have to kind of do it in reverse the way a, a, I guess a civilian <laughs> woman would do it, you yeah, know, yeah, because... Yeah. Imagine Google, you know, you're going out with Sarah. You know, sometimes guys and people want to Google who they're seeing just to know a little bit about them. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Googling Sarah J, there's a lot that comes at you that is going to affect you going in. So I think it's interesting that you have to do it in reverse the way a woman would be very yeah. slow to do the physical contact. Uh, you have to go. Uh, you have to go right in for it. Where I go, let me let me get I a little bit out of it. I think it makes all of us feel better. I feel like, uh, you know. You're going to be constantly nervous until we get to that point anyway. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I there's I don't feel like there's a lot that I could say to like to make keep that okay. You keep to, well to keep you like sexually aroused in me but also relaxed enough to be calm. So like yeah, let's just touch a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, yeah. I, it's a funny thing because a lot of even times, if it's just like me rubbing somebody's back or like yeah. holding their hand or something, yeah. I think like a physical touch is kind of important to get over nerves. Well, you, it's really interesting when you say it because a lot of times I'll tell a guy if this is the first date, you should lead off with a hug, and there should as you move from you know from the initial hug to you know we we talk about moving from venue to venue that you escalate the touch from venue to venue and and it, yeah. it becomes more comfortable because a lot of guys will not touch right and then they go through the date and date's great or whatever and then they get to the door and they want to go for the kiss and then so but there's such a wide chasm because kissing is very intimate so yeah to, no touch to a kiss, which is something super intimate, is such a wide jump that a lot of times it's it's hard to 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 get there. You are so right. You are so right. And um, I never thought about it in those terms, but yeah. you are absolutely right. Like, um, I am a very touchy person, and I yeah. like to touch people if I if I like them, you know. Yeah. And the, the more I like someone, the more I touch somebody. Yeah. And it's almost like me giving them permission to engage further with me right. you know like uh, i might tell a story and like pat your leg 
or mm-hmm. like, you know, touch your shoulder or like maybe put my arm around your shoulder mm-hmm. or put my hand on your thigh. Mm-hmm. And that just lets you know that like I'm into it. Right, like, right, right, yeah, this is all working out. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're so, communicating in a way to, to kind of give permission, uh, like a nonverbal p- permission. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. Sarah has I think has that a lot approach. of women do that in... No, Sarah has oh, to approach sorry. it the way guys, the, the guys are, guy, we're trying to instruct guys to approach it, which is interesting because she has a different circumstance. So she has to initiate the physicality to let them know it's that, you know, because it's so overtly, I guess her career is so overtly sexual that it makes it comfortable for them, which is interesting because for, yeah. for under, you know, regular, I don't like using the word normal, but you know, it's a different type of career. So forgive me if I use the word normal sure. or regular, but Civilian. civi- yeah, civilians, yeah. <laughs> Who, day who, walkers. <laughs> day walkers, day walkers, but you know, it's a different non-sex dynamic, workers. non-sex workers. So it's a different <laughs> dynamic, but it's interesting that you have to approach it in, in a different way for guys. Yeah. Because especially like you said, Dante going from zero to 60 is such a yeah. difficult, a difficult chasm to bridge over, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, another thing I, I, like I would do a lot of times is, if I tell guys this is interesting, like if you go into dinner, instead of sitting across from somebody, I'll sit next to them. And then I will oh. I, I'll put my thigh right against yours because then that's this is what you're talking about. There's this contact. It's it's the you want to get comfortable with with the touching. And yeah. when it's non-sexual or it's just I'd rather sit next to you. And and they're, and you're you're next to them and stuff and you know you know you're not crowding them but you t- you know that that is a it, it's it's almost like you're 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 uh, logging minutes of this contact which is ultimately where you just go hug somebody and you the clock is where you just wait till they stop. right you know I just I I think that I know how men think a little bit more than a lot of women maybe. Yes. Yeah. And I want to respect their masculinity, right. but also at the same time, um, I want to make them feel comfortable mm-hmm. and let them know that whatever they're thinking is probably okay. Right. <laughs> and when, it's not, when it's not, you let them know it's, it's not. Yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. Yeah, Cause yeah, you'll just sure. get up and leave, which is, the, you know, right? it's, <laughs> yes. you know it's, it's such a, it's a, it's an interesting thing how, um, you know, intimacy, you know, in terms of intimacy, you have such an aptitude with intimacy because of adult, because of the adult. I mean, just you you get good at stuff by doing it. I mean, you want to be good at it. You you got to practice. And and the fact that you 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 do this, it's not awkward to you, you know. Mm-hmm. And I have to like also take into consideration that it's awkward to others. So. Yeah. And I have to be considerate and respectful of their awkwardness. Like what um, the way that I handle things is not normal. The life that I have had is not normal. The experiences that I've had are not normal. So I have to respect where they're coming from and try to like meet them, you know? I mean, you don't have to, but I just think it's great that it, 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 it speaks to you, your empathy to, to do that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, where Where is the Sarah J meeting people these days? How is that? How is that going for you? Where are you encountering people? <sighs> you know, um, I really am not great with meeting people, to be honest with you. Um, when I do meet pe- people, it's usually because I'm out with like a girlfriend and she starts talking to somebody who mm. has somebody with them. And now I have to talk to that other yeah, person. Running block. Um, <laughs> No, it's okay. Like, um, I'm just, I'm not like super social and the older I get, the like less social I get, but, um, you get a couple of drinks in me sitting at a bar and pull up next to me. I might talk to you. (laughs) That's dope. That's dope. Um, it's it's a lot of the people that I like, you know, end up hanging out with or going out with it's on like referral from another friend. It's like, Oh, you know, I've got this friend, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. How does that work when you like they like you are internationally like I like I don't know anybody that doesn't know <laughs> you. You know what I mean? So how is that? Yeah, this friend. Uh, you, I mean, is it? But they know what you do. You know, I mean, they know who sure. you are. Um, yeah, it, and and you know, um, 
the way that I navigate my life, I compartmentalize people for what we can do for each other, you know? And um, it's kind of like, I if I have any um, job openings... <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, but usually the, 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 I'm not taking any applications and all the positions have been filled but um you know <laughs> like it is really weird and I don't feel comfortable going out in public with most people um yeah it's it that's very hard because because of know, the judgment yeah going out the, wow, so many things, you know, uh, sometimes I might go out with uh, other famous people and then people mm -hmm. see us or, um, yeah, I would just, you know what? It's just hard. Let's just stay home. What order yeah. eats? Like that's when it always ends up happening. I'm like, oh, we go to this place and I got to call ahead. And then there's this line and, uh, the people there, they know me and you know what? Let's just it's stay weird. Home it's weird order when order all the eat. waiters and busboys all fill your water glass coming to the table. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why? Why do they the give water? three bottles of water here? I don't need this many bottles of water. I just happened in D.C. I was out to lunch with a girlfriend and, you know, it, everybody knows me and I'm cool with that. Yeah. But it, it gets awkward sometimes. You know, like there was three bottles. When you say that there was literally three liter bottles on our <laughs> table. Every water boy kept coming by to see if we needed more water. Every person knew my name. Oh, Miss J, do you need another Bloody Mary? Miss J, do you want some oysters? <laughs> and it's so sweet. I get it. But also it's like. All right, kind I of funny. Want, I don't know. I who want to be human. I just who, want to be human. Who's the most surprising person that you found outside recognize you? Any like celebrity that you're like, wow, I didn't know they knew who I was. Wow. Obama. I, Obama. Mean, <laughs> 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 I forgot about that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you right, know, other than like, other someone who's not commander in chief, other than commander in chief, who is the most You know famous? that whole Osama bin Laden thing was kind of threw me off. I was like, what? Oh yeah, that apparent. Yeah, apparently Osama. They found my porn in Osama. I was like, oh okay. <laughs> uh yeah. That, I mean, once that happened, I was like, fuck it. Everybody's watching me. Fuck. Everybody's seen inside of my vagina. Everybody. I mean, <laughs> nothing was. That was that was the one to be honest with you. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, everybody's watching me. That's Osama, gotta. But Osama, also Osama, when Osama was going, yeah, death to America, yeah. except for Osama. <laughs> <Day."> yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's so cool. It's so cool. Um, we could have found him so much know? faster if we had just sent Sarah J. If we had we known, if we had just <laughs> dropped Sarah J. in the Middle right. East, we would have lured him out really quick. <laughs> It, it will also surprise me, too, when I, you know, I travel a lot and I go, you know, places like Colombia and I go to different islands and stuff. And like, I'll just be someplace super random and very obscure and somebody with like no shoes on and like yesterday's clothes is like chasing me down the street, screaming my name, you know, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like that you know, always is amazing to me because like you're like you guys even watch TV like yeah. <laughs> you have a TV you guys don't look like you have electricity <laughs> like Sarah J no for Sarah sure. J Sarah J oh, then they gotta watch porn together Sarah, Sarah J Sarah yeah. J Sarah, uh, yeah it's hilarious they got one it's TV hilarious. in the village and everybody's watching porn together storing it yeah. for, like it's weird it's weird. Um, I was just in Curacao and I was in the equivalent of their like Coast Guard office. It's a long <laughs> story, but like what a random like weird place yeah. for me to be. Right. And a very small little office on the far end of the island, very tiny island in the middle of right, nowhere, right. you know, and I go in there and yeah, there's a, there's only three people in the office out of three of them. One of them recognized me and was like, can I get a picture? I'm like, this has got to be so weird for him. Like he didn't expect to come in here and see I, me today. <laughs> I bet you if Elon Musk ever gets us to Mars, the first thing they're going to find is a Sarah J DVD on the on the top oh, of the sure. <laughs> on top of the Mars rover. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you love what we're doing here. Go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Sarah, last time... <laughs> 
you you were uh, trying to get your. I remember last time you talked about form, and maybe one day the Golden Girls of porn. That was your little idea that one day, <laughs> um, with your single friends. Uh, what is the thing your single friends say about dating that's uh, lacking? What do they want out of dates? You know? Um, you know, a lot of people really hate people that are in their phone, and they would like a little bit more, like in real life, attention. Mm. You know, I think that that's probably um, not just with dates, but also just people. I, I hear a lot of people complain about that, like just in general, like, oh, like, you know, we went out the other day, but I didn't even talk to her the whole time because she was in her phone or vice versa, you know. And um, I think like valuing someone's presence and looking at them when you talk to them and showing interest in what they're saying and trying to have a conversation back with them. It's like very important. It's so like, and this is what I was, I was really excited about um, talking to you because, you know, we, we did Godfrey's podcast before and we, and you've yeah. done this one and stuff and, and, you know, a lot of we. I I always liked when I interview. I want to talk about different things. I, you know, I don't want to just. You know, uh, you like come on your face. You know, it's just it's just so contrived. <laughs> thing, I yeah. really don't. I really like. I you don't know how much I enjoy having you on because Harry will tell you I do not like and have we have don't. important stuff. No, and because you. I mean, I don't have to tell you this. The, the yeah, why, I was so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like having, I like money. I like having sex. So I did. Right. I, it's like this, there's so you've cult. There's so much more cultivated about you. Sarah J will give you a different answer. If you ask, if you ask Sarah J, hey, do you like getting come on your face? She goes, well, what's the pH level? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, it depends on the cum, right? I mean, some cum is real nasty. <laughs> I want to, I because a lot of the majority of the, the the show, the listeners of the show, are guys. I can't. I so I wanted to talk to you about something. We haven't talked about this penis size. Okay. Oh, let's talk about it. Yes. All right. So first of all, are you a you are you a size queen or no? I don't like that word. People have called me size queen, and I'll just take it. But I would never. I don't. Call if I was offensive, size I queen. apologize. But why? No, not at all. Not at all. I just don't feel like it's accurate. I'm not offended. I just don't feel like it's accurate because okay. I can take large penises. Right. But I can also take small penises and right. everything in the middle. And I don't have to have a large penis, yeah, but, but I can take queen, it and I can enjoy is, it. Isn't a size queen somebody? I feel like a size queen is somebody who's seeking out the biggest penises. I'm definitely not seeking out right, the biggest so then, penises. I, mean, I, care I, less. I don't think anybody... I can, I can work with whatever you got. Right, right. <laughs> but, that, but then I, I would say that would mean you're not a size queen. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? But she's I, been yeah, dubbed but, a size queen. Right. Yeah, yeah. She's been Because dubbed. I can take large dicks and I enjoy large dicks, but I don't like chase them down and like just look Right, 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 right. Like, you know? Yeah, I I have amazing sex with like small dicks sometimes right. and sometimes right. medium dicks. Yeah. It just depends on the dick. It, it's really the motion in the ocean, you know. It's that old adage. <laughs> okay. so Sarah's all about diversity, whether it's uh, ethnicity or size. She's yeah. all about all yeah. are welcome in Sarah's uh, Sarah's statue. I'm not of putting nobody vagina. in a box. Right, right. Yeah, right. I'm not putting well, anybody. Well, in well a not box. nobody. I mean, in your box sometimes. <laughs> Unless they want to be humiliated and put in a box, then maybe you can get, get right. it. But I, I, mean, I think it's important to talk about that. I, I think because so often um, guys will be like, oh, my dick's not big enough. And 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 one of the things that, you know, that I that I, I really like. So one of the things that I say to guys all the time is um, so if I, I have a, a a process that I get a guy where he's involved in, you know, he's starting, he can't get women. He has a hard time. He has approach anxiety mm -hmm. and, and nobody's going to hug it out and make it okay. Um, and right. one, of, one of the things is I, I, we, Harry and I both, we profess to have a guy pay five compliments a day to women every day, not sexual. Uh, they have to be honest and not just women that they find attractive. So it's just a, an engagement. Sure. Him, number one, it teaches them how to be truthful because the 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 compliment has to be honest because it has to be it has to be truthful. Two, 
in order to be honest, you have to be present, which is what you're talking about, cell phones and stuff. Yeah. And so you got to actually, so even if you find a woman unattractive, there's something about her. It could be her makeup or her, or the, the, the that's a lovely green against the skin, skin tone. It really, you know, but to, to, to stop them to take a breath, to be interested in this person and engage on a human level creates this kind of intimacy. Um, it also mm -hmm. removes the approach anxiety because what they think is going to happen when they talk to a woman is, oh, I'm going to get cursed out. And that never happens. And moreover than not, I've, I've had a guy, every guy that I've ever put them through my plan, they, they, they'll have a situation where they'll pay a compliment to some woman. And, and, and women, a lot of times, women are very insecure and worried about, you know, what it looks like and, and so this guy complimented on this young lady on her makeup. And she was like, oh, my God, thank you. I'm like, really? And she was like, I just, you know, <laughs> like my dog yeah. died. And I just was in a bunkie. And I figured I would try this lipstick. And I wasn't really sure. And thank you so yeah. much. Just just like, blah, 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 just because sure. they don't see women as human. Like, they put them on a pedestal. Yeah. And they don't understand that they have the the... You some talk to me. Come on, because I because I know there's something on your mind. You know, I, I, like well, first of all, like I do that to kind of um whenever I'm nervous around a woman, not even like necessarily sometimes sexually, but right. uh for whatever reason I might be nervous around a woman. Maybe if she's a person of authority, or maybe mm. I feel like I need to be nice to her for some reason, or right. like whatever reason I might be nervous around a woman, I always compliment her. Mm -hmm. And if the more nervous I am, the more compliments <laughs> I throw out. Because a lot of times that also disarms them. Yeah. So if they were going to come at you like harshly or maybe a little rough, it kind of like softens our whole sure, demeanor sure. between and the I two think of if us. It's, yeah. it's really authentic if the comment, if the compliment yeah. is honest. Like if you, I've, I've complimented a girl like she had really, her eye makeup was like she had the smoky eye going on. And like, oh, I'm, I love that smoky eye. First of all, she's yeah. not looking at me at any point and think that I would know with a smoky eye and so it's like what yeah, right yeah. and then <laughs> in, order, in order to do a smoky eye it it takes a lot of time and effort and it, it's something that you want to look right and so acknowledging the work that women put yes. in to be beautiful is it it resonates them in a way that i think guys don't understand if, if you're a man and you see a woman and you are intimidated by her or nervous and you look at her and you see a bunch of stuff that you could never do, like mm. walking in heels right. or um, caring for three kids. You know, like yeah. when I see moms out, I'm like, yeah. praise you. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing, you know what? There was a family at the airport just recently and I stopped and I was like, you guys are doing a great job. But people yeah. appreciate compliments yes. and yeah. it really gets you far because yeah. we don't compliment each other enough. And I give women compliments probably more than anybody because we really appreciate that, especially coming from women. Yeah. Uh, but we also appreciate it coming from men as well because it, we just don't do that enough, especially when it's not like, oh, you look great in that dress. Well, of course, yeah. like, that's what a guy's going to yeah, say. But you tell me I got a fucking is. nice... You like you like my you like my shadow. That's yeah, yeah. like a totally different story. Yeah. yeah. That's so like thing. nice that's genuine important. compliments. Yeah, they're sincere and um they also open up conversation too. Like just right. like you said, like, oh, you know, I was feeling down today and I thought I would go a little extra zhuzh in my makeup. Right. And now you know more about this chick. And yeah. uh now, you know, you can open up the door for more conversation. Yeah. I've I've said this over and over again that honesty is probably the most attractive thing about a guy. In any way, I, I understand that there are other variables, but at on a base level, you can have a guy who's gorgeous and he's a douchebag and he's yeah. not attractive <laughs> to women because women don't resonate. And so, you know, being a guy who tells the truth um, is authentic in who he is. Somebody who's credible, who says, I'm going to do something and they do it. And somebody who has the empathy to know what you're going through or what you're not going through is a really important thing. And when women... I don't even know if women understand the level of that, but they know on a visceral level what that feels like. It feels it feels warm and cozy and safe and attractive. And you get so far with that. And I'm not saying that, you know, a six pack is not great and gray hair and stuff. But at, on a fundamental level, 
when a, I, I, and, I, and the way I put it is if you're not, if you're dishonest, if I tell you I love you, how could you believe me if I'm a liar? If I tell yeah, you sure, I got sure. your back, if I tell you I got your back, how do you believe me if I'm a liar? And so at the base level, all of that goes to shit. Um, you know, if you don't have that. that so I, I just want to be clear so the guys understand that well, I wasn't calling you a side screen, but I was just saying, are you? And you you yeah. just felt that's not it. And I'm and uh, because we've had um shout out to I'm Co- a sex queen. I like to have sex. Uh like sweet. good sex. We have like so much in common. engaging. Yeah. Weird, <laughs> we, um but we had a, we had a, one of the comic friends of my Chloe Hilliard. She is absolutely a size queen. She's like, if you ain't got nine to start, that's her cutoff. I'm not fucking with you. And I, I tell you, Chloe, Chloe goes, uh Listen, maybe I'll do seven inches, but you got to you got to have some good personality to make up for the missing inches. <laughs> and so she is. That's and hilarious. I, and yeah. she was just saying, I like the fullness of it. I like to. And I, I told you, like, she has a preference. But I think that guys, the same way a guy will expect when you talk to a woman that you're going to get cursed out and stuff. And then when they go and they're playing honest confidence and the, those response, like, oh, my God, my, I was just I was feeling really bad. And, um, the same thing is true about penis size, that it's it's the intimacy behind it and all that stuff yeah. uh, underneath it that makes it the intimacy and stuff. It's, it just uh, affects, you know, women. You, in know, a way. you fuck somebody so much better when you like them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, and this is coming from somebody who has sex with people that I don't even know sometimes, you know, like I, I'll get to work and I don't know who this person is that I'm working right. with. And maybe I have seen them, but I don't know who they are as a human being. You know what I mean? So, um, I will tell you my sex is better. Not saying that I can't have good sex with right, strangers. Right. You, you know how to My sex the... is better yeah. when I like you. Yeah. Like if I like you, oh, I'm going to try harder. I want. I think you're going to try harder because you like me. I think we're both going to try harder. I think it's going to be exponentially better. You know. Yeah. Um, What's a thing so, that somebody you know, did right before a scene that made you not like them? No, you don't have to name names, oh, but some racist shit. Some racist shit with a girl too, and it was like we were supposed to be in a, a girl, girl, boy scene, and we had this like very long wait after makeup. So we did makeup together, and then we had this very long wait. And she was just saying the N word and she was saying a lot of things. And uh, yeah, I was, I could, was not in the position where I could just like walk off, you know, like um, we'd already, we'd already been there like three hours. And uh, like my makeup wardrobe was already done. Was the, was it an interracial scene as well or no? It was not. Okay. All right. But well, I like, there was two, it was two uh, people that were Latin and then uh-huh. myself who was white. Yeah. And uh yeah, there was there was just like a lot of craziness going on. Yeah. And I, I was yeah. I just put my headphones in and I was just like, yeah. don't this is not part of your job, you right, know, right, like right. don't let this like affect it because you gotta do the thing to her and you gotta try to make her feel good. <laughs> and uh yeah. <laughs> but thing. literally that's what you know yeah, that's what I'd be like trying to. I'm like, oh, like, because, yeah. you know, once you don't like somebody, yeah. you don't want to make them come. Like, the desire yeah. to make them come, it goes away. Yeah. And you're like, shit, I don't even want to make you come right now. Like, yeah. you're an awful human being. It's a bummer. Yeah. It, there is yeah. yeah. an aspect it's, that's it's different in, in a workplace where you got to go, yeah, I hate your guts, but now I, I have to, to make work. you feel the best pleasure in the world right time now. Time to go to work. Yeah. yeah. Time to go to yeah. work. Like, it's the same thing for me if I had to be an accountant. You know, like, I hate math. I don't want to do this at all. Um, Sarah, <laughs> right. Thank you. You know, so you much. mentioned something about honesty, if you don't mind me touching back on that, because it goes n- beyond um, like men trying to get women and trying to be honest. If you are honest to whoever you yeah. are around, you are going to get what you need. If you're not honest, you're not going to get what you need. Right. So um, if you are like, look, I actually, I like to have like many girlfriends. Mm. Um, I I feel that maybe I can spread my love to at least three or four girlfriends. And uh, I feel like I could juggle like a lot of relationships. 
Now, if you're open and honest with somebody from the beginning, you're going to yeah. attract people who are into that. They're like, yeah, I got a couple of boyfriends too. And that's fine right. with me. Yeah, but yeah. if you're not, then you're going to put yourself into situations that you're going to constantly be struggling through. So right. be, and I don't mean just sexually. I mean, like with everything. everything, the more honest that you are with yourself and honest with those around you, the more you're going to get what you need. So and I, I think that that's, that's really a powerful that's I, tool. That's something I say. All I, I talk to these guys about this, the, the importance of authenticity and honesty over and over again. And, and I, we, you know, we talk about it in terms of relationships and sexual dynamics and stuff like that. But it's it goes far beyond that. This is something I'm going to say to you and then we're going to close it out. Even if somebody is 95 percent trustworthy, that is the definition of being untrustworthy. <laughs> and so yeah. the, the, and I'm not saying that people don't have to be that you expect people to be perfect, but you expect people to approach with the intention on being uh, authentic and truthful. And I think if you're truthful, you're credible and you're empathetic, you can't there's no way you could be a better human being like this. It, as we're flawed, there's there's no way you can be a better human being. So be being ninety five percent truthful, that's like saying this ice cream only has five percent dog shit in it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, oh, that's say, like those two percent human hot dogs. You know yeah, that? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Oh know. my goodness. Sarah, only two percent though. Sarah, I love you to death. I mean, thank you so much for doing. I would love <laughs> to have you back on again. This way, it'll give me my some pleasure. Time to um to 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 come up with th these questions and only that that you can answer and 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 <laughs> I think when they hear it from you, um, because my tits aren't as big as yours, they believe you more than they believe me. Um, yeah, I had a couple experiences. <laughs> but um, real quick, the the CBD oil is what's the name of the company and. It's Sarah J Self Care Collection. You can get it at sarahjcbd.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Um, don't forget to follow us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Follow us on uh, YouTube. Um, I'm also doing consultations every, every Tuesday at 8.30 free consultations to just call up on YouTube. We're streaming live. Um, you want consultations from me directly, one-on-one, DanteNero.com. Click on consult for Harry. Click uh, advice from Harry at gmail.com. Hit him yeah, up. Yeah, just email me there. Um, uh, you know, follow us on all social media, like and share and all those, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you much, so much, Sarah. Love you much. And I, I can't you. wait to see you again. All right. Thank you so much. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.